When Pinoy baiting became like a thing, did you get scared? Bad traits of Filipinos that piss you off. If there's one thing, what pisses you off? Before you coming to Mindanao, did you have that kind of fear that, no, I don't want to go to Mindanao because I heard it's, it's a dangerous place. Gusto na na ko ipaila sa inyo ah. Ang ako ang kachitchat karong adlaw. Walay lain pa. Kyle Jennerman, also known as Kulas, sa Becoming Filipino. Kulas. What's up, man? <laughs> Before we get into a, a deeper chit chat, I just want to talk about what you're building in here. Because, you know, like when I saw it with my own eyes, I had goosebumps, man. You have like, this is paradise. What was your inspiration? Uh, you know what? Actually, the coolest thing is. I, if you look behind us there, obviously, you see, right. I call it the super payag, right? Super payag. You can see yeah. it's kind of natural and local. My inspiration is just really, I mean, I know that's it's super, it's big, right? It and is. It's funky it is. And, it is. and like, obviously, we're sitting here in what's going to be my home and mm -hmm. it's funky mm -hmm. as well. And uh, But my inspiration is really just wanting to have something that connects everybody mm -hmm. and like a happy place that's a part of the community and mm -hmm. also invites people like my friends or my family right. or friends of friends to come and, and learn about the community and be mm -hmm. connected. So You started with a, with a Super Payag first, yeah. right? That's, yeah. how, that's how you started in, in Kapil. Yeah, that was the... Actually, I lived in the little Nipah hut next door right. for nine months and we just started yeah, putting this together with the locals. That's 100% mm -hmm. Kata'il built. Mm -hmm. And and then yeah, it just expanded to we have the kitchen, and then now there's a little dirty kitchen, right. and, and then you have the a house, and then this one. I actually never imagined that I'd be building a home, like right. a home home. Right. But it's happening, and it's cool, and I still can't even believe it. Mm. But I'm really also excited because I believe this isn't just going to be my home, right. but it's going to be home for a lot of positive connection here. And how, how have you been? Amazing, man. Like You're I, living the life, I, man. You know, you know what? I've been living the life ever since I've just been here in the Philippines, mm -hmm. knowing that I'm still here. Like It's really... I'm just happy, man. Ever since 2014, when I really right, stayed, right. I've been living the life. Man. You lived in CDO first, mm -hmm. right? What made you move to Katil, the Oriental? Once in here, man, what did you see in here? What really kind of attracted me to Katil mm -hmm. was just the local vibe. I'm in the province in Mindanao, in a barangay. I'm part of the barangay. It's dope. Like, Have you become Filipino already? So becoming Filipino was never about me trying to be a Filipino. Personally, I think that would be a little bit disrespectful, right? You know, yes. I'm a Canadian dude. Yes, yes. So yes. when I said the term becoming Filipino, it was because I was having a lot of really positive experiences yeah. here that were becoming part of my life, my kinabuhi, diba? Right, so right. I just wanted to share those. So I called it becoming Filipino. But, mm -hmm. you know, eight and a half years later, and now I'm a House Bill and a Senate Bill. You know, House Bill 10623, Senate Bill 2499 that's petitioning me to potentially really right. become a Filipino. Have you, like, I think I've read something about the dual citizenship. Was it approved last year? The, so December 14th, uh, Congress filed a bill, House Bill 10623, and right. that's a petition. It went through first reading, and then I was just approved before the break for elections uh -huh. on second reading by the Committee on Justice. So it will go back after elections. Th after elections. It'll go back for a third reading, and then there'll also be a Senate bill uh, that has to go through the process too, but it, it could happen in, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it, it may never happen, and that's okay, because I'm just happy and blessed to be here. Mm -hmm. But if it does happen, it, it will be the greatest. Some Filipinos notice when it comes to... I know it's coming, bro. White vloggers. Yep coming to the Philippines and they call it uh, Pinoy baiting. Yeah. At some point when you were starting as a becoming Filipino Kulas, did you ever feel that? 2014, I started this becoming Filipino right. thing. The reason I started it was I had four purposes, okay? So number one, I genuinely believed if I introduced people to the country in a positive way, mm -hmm. it would have a positive effect on their lives and thus other people around the world. Number two, as you know, the Philippines isn't always happy and amazing. There's a lot of difficult stuff. Right. And a lot of my Filipino friends, they would talk about that stuff sometimes so much that it would overwhelm them and they'd forget about the good stuff. 
So I wanted to inspire that conversation, mm. positive mm. talk. Mm. Number three, there's foreign nationals like myself who would come to this country maybe with the wrong intentions mm -hmm. or with the wrong kind of vibes or not for the right reasons, you yeah. know? And that would reflect bad on them and yeah. people here. Number four, Mindanao. I was so shocked that this place is so, you know, stereotyped and generalized. So what happens, mm -hmm. I had those four reasons and then I was like, what am I gonna, gonna do? Right. Well, I need to tell people about this. So I guess I have to hold the camera and I guess I have to write posts. So, but what if I write posts and nobody believes it? I guess I have to, make videos and that's right. why I started so when I started doing this it was all passion and purpose right. it was never give me followers give me likes make me money it was really off passion and purpose mm -hmm. now over the years of course I started to notice yeah I would get some extra special attention right. probably because I'm a white dude mm -hmm. and a foreign guy um, but knowing that I had my intentions and purposes always there and then I would always talk about them with people, yeah. explain to people. I was always with Filipinos, mm -hmm. living with mm -hmm. Filipino families. I think that something like Pinoy baiting or, or that kind of thing, personally, it upsets me if people apply that to me because yes. of what I've been through yes. and lived through. Yes. But I understand why it exists because it does. When, it, when, when Pinoy baiting became like, a thing. Did you get scared? Personally, for me, I, I was never afraid of it. Mm. If somebody calls me a Pinoy baiter, I don't. I don't want to waste my energy trying to, to talk about that. I'd rather waste my energy going out and doing yeah. positive things yeah. with Filipinos here yeah. in the Philippines because I know I'm not that person. But I also respect why they say it because it's true. A lot of people just come here and go like, "Yay! This is the greatest thing ever! I love mm. it! Mm. Yay! I'm eating Jollibee today! Look at me eat Jollibee! It's my favorite thing in the world!" <laughs> And, yeah. I mean, maybe it is. I, I can't judge them because I never met them. Maybe Jollibee is their favorite thing in the world. Mm. But maybe it's not, and maybe they're using that as a ploy to get people mm. to watch them. I don't, I've, I've never applied it to myself because yeah. I know that's not me. Do you follow any Filipino creators? Who are they? Who, well, I, I, did, I did, like I said, I said earlier to yeah. you, like I obviously knew who you were in 2017 because you started talking about Mindanao, and I thought that was dope. <laughs> so I, I knew who you were, of course. Bogart, of course. I, I, he, in fact, I remember sitting on a deck in Cebu in 2013, mm. and random thing, a, a snake got run over by a car, and then all my Filipino buddies, we, were, you know, we cooked it and stuff. Anyways, yeah. but at that time, we're chilling on this deck, watching Bogart. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I remember he was the first ever Filipino creator I ever right. saw. Right. And one then, of the OGs, actually. One of the OGs. Yeah. And then even there's, I'll give you an example, something that was cool. This guy, this guy, boy, first time. He's mm -hmm. like a motor rider from Bulacan. And, oh, but right, like, right, he right. actually came and visited my house in Kaigian. I toured him around Mindanao. There are really no Filipino, like say bad traits of Filipinos that piss you off. If there's one thing, what pisses you off? <laughs> when people negatively stereotype and generalize things. Yeah. Case in point, Mindanao, bro. Like, yeah. I, I, that, it makes me so upset. Not even just Mindanao, anywhere, and people just, stick people in a box or generalize them. I'm pointing at you. That's how upset it makes me. Right? Are you still struggling with, in, with, this kind of, with this kind of issue? Like people, um, like they have a misconception about Mindanao. Because that's what your contents are, are, are all about. Like you trying to prove, not really trying to prove, but you're, you're showing the world that Mindanao is not really a dangerous place. Are you still struggling with, 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 with this? I, I find it sad that I actually, that there are people that, okay, case in point, 97,500 square kilometers, 27 million people, 27 provinces, 19th largest island in the world, bigger than Ireland. Ireland's a whole country. Mindanao's bigger than it. Why is this even a conversation? Because of a few extremist people and negative things, but does that, why is that overshadowing right. these 27 million people? Like, yeah, I mean, I, I struggle with the thought that people think that way. You know, 2014, I'm driving my scooter in Laguna. Mm -hmm. I pull over, there's a lady selling Babinka. She goes, oh, uh, where are you from? And am I broken to Galag? I'm like, ah, Galing Canada po, pero nakatira kagian di oro Mindanao. And she looks at me and goes, Abu Sayyaf. And I'm like, Wh why is this person the first thing that comes to their mind, Abu Sayyaf, when I just listed to you how big and diverse and, you know, like that, that, yeah, I struggle with it because I, I just don't, 
I don't understand why it exists. But before you coming to Mindanao, did you have that kind of fear that, no, I don't want to go to Mindanao because I heard it's, it's a dangerous place? I was lucky because when I first came to Mindanao, I was working with Filipinos in Hong Kong. That's what got me here. Oh. I in Hong Kong with like 15 Filipinos. They're my work colleagues. They inspired me to come here because they invited me. They said, hey, come visit our country. We think you love it. So my first trip was Cebu, and then the next week, Kagi and Dioro, mm. Kamig and Davao, you know, Mindanao area. And I didn't even think anything else of it because I was with people who showed me positive stuff. I, I didn't even know what Mindanao was. Then I left, and I'm telling all my friends in Canada, my parents, and yeah, yeah, mm. I visited mm. the Philippines. I went to Mindanao, and they go, I researched this, it's a horrible place, what are you doing, it's so dangerous, you shouldn't go. And then I type in the Canadian Travel Advisory and it says literally word for word. I think it's still there to this day, it says word for word, if you think it's safe to leave, you should do so. If, should I get up now and make sure yeah. that the war is done yeah. and so now I can evacuate? It's that dangerous? Like. That, that's what the world th thinks of Mindanao. Right, so right. I, I, I found that out after coming here. My first experience in Mindanao was awesome. And I'm so thankful it was because it shaped my life here. It made me realize, oh, maybe this place can be awesome. And the more I explored it, the more I realized it is. Yeah. By the way, I, f I, f I forgot to ask you why, of all places in Mindanao and in, in the Philippines, how did you land in, in the CDL? Yeah, my work, work colleagues from Hong Kong a few of them are from Cebu, a few are from Kagi and Dioro, a few are from Davao, a few are from QC. Oh, okay. So what happened is the, my buddies who I worked with in Hong Kong were from Kagi and Dioro. And I kid you not, I, when I went on my second trip, after a week of sleeping in my buddy's house with right. the, the Factura family, with the family, the Tito and Tita just wouldn't let me leave. And then I just sort of became adopted and, mm, and mm. lived there. So it was work colleagues. Who, well, what, what made you really fall in love in the city hall. <laughs> I, I get it, okay? I, I, ra rafting is the big tourism thing there. Now, oh, here, right, but here, right, but right, here's, right. He, here's what made me really stay in CDO is it, I mean, I actually thought I was going to settle in Cebu at first because mm. I lived in Liloan for a month and a half, North Cebu, and it was great. But CDO mm. was smaller, you know, it felt more like a community and you could escape it quicker. Like you could just pop over to Ligan, to the waterfalls, right, go to Bukidon, right. hang out, oh, right, go to right, Kaligan. Right. But Again, you know what actually is really why I stayed there? Because every time I left, people would be like, oh, it's Mindanao, don't stay there, it's bad. <laughs> you know, Kalas, what are you doing? I wasn't even Kalas and I was Kyle. Right, right. What are you doing? Don't go there. And I realized it's really inspiring when you're immersed with people who have all these negative things being thrown at them, but who choose to respond by being proud of where they're from. And I was like, man, I want to be a part of this community because that inspires me mm. to think that people can be throwing me and, yeah. and yet I can still yeah. be proud of who I am and where I'm from. So that, that's what really kept me. Was if there's one place in the Philippines, aside from Tatil, mm -hmm. that you really want to settle down, uh, where would it be? It's tough, man, because truth is, like, such a diverse country, and there's so many unique places, like, man, I, I could have been happy pretty much anywhere. I could have been happy in Bohol, you know, Maadjo. Right, I could have right, been happy right. in Ilocos Norte. I could have been happy in Antique. You yeah. know, it's, uh, it's like people sometimes ask me this question, like, "Where's your favorite place?" And I always yeah. answer with, "Well, what do you want?" You know, and like here, I don't know. I, so you don't really have like like specific favorite place. In no, favorite man. Place. And even though I'm very pro Mindanao, because right. my home's here, my inspiration right. really grew here, but. Yeah, dude, I just love the whole country, bro. Like, the Philippines is dope from north to south, and I've been to 80 of the 81 provinces, yeah. so, like, I'd be happy, I would be happy being anywhere in the Philippines. You've been, yeah, you've been traveling around the Philippines for so many years now. Is there, like, or are there places that traumatized you in any way? I, 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 I just don't yeah. have anything negative that's happened to me in the Philippines. I only had positive experiences. Anything that was a little bit negative, yeah. I just recognized it for what it was and, and then found a way to make it positive. Mm -hmm. So uh, no, man, I've never, and dude, like, I mean, I've seen like the MPA blowing up trucks, you know, mm. I've witnessed that in person. <laughs> I've heard firefights, right, you know? like right. I've seen some hardcore shit too, but it's not like anything. Like firsthand. Yeah, in 2015, bro, I was driving my scooter from Kegi into Davao and in Quezon Bukinon, cool. I rolled up and, and, was, and that never traumatized you? No, because I'm realistic. So, I mean, I asked the army, I was like, hey, what's going on? Yeah. They explained to me there's a, just a thing and 
and then they're having a firefight, and but it's okay. And then, and then you realize like it's horrible and miserable, and you have to recognize it exists. But again, it's like a very small, isolated thing mm -hmm. that it, it's never, it's never scared me. Wow, yeah. you. Uh, being here in the Philippines for for like really long time now and uh, you found a good friend named Kumar. I first met him in a resta bar uh, in July of 2013 because I was with my barcada who were outdoors in Kage Dioro. Oh, yeah, and uh, he, I was with like the rafting community there mm. like my Manong was from that community so we're like you know having a beer in the, in the resta bar and, and this dude just comes in and you know he sits in a chair and then goes to sleep and I was like, oh, and they're like, yeah, this is Kumar. I was like, oh, cool. And that, that's how we met. <laughs> really? He's the guy who came into the rest of where I went to sleep on the chair. And, but he's, he's the coolest dude, man. And like, actually, in 2014, he has a background in, I think it's like DevCom or something. Or is it some, some sort of communications camera stuff from Xavier? And, uh, oh, okay. And uh, my friends like knew I was going to roam around the country, but they also knew I had no clue how to talk to a camera, shoot with a camera or anything. So they recommended like, hey man, like, dude, you should ask Kumar, maybe he can come with you. And right. we did like one trip for like a few days on my scooter. That was it. And then next thing you know, we're doing like 35 days nonstop, island to island, all over and yes. And you have other other friends in here. Yeah, John D. Yeah. John D uh, came on like a, a trip a few months, a few years ago. And then when we went to Tawi Tawi, it was me and Kumar. And then I wanted to bring a second person to get, because it's Tawi Tawi, bro. So right, I was like, oh, we need right, more footage because right, right. it'd be so cool. Um, and so he came and then next thing you know, he also became, I was like, wow, he's good at cooking and, and then he's a bro. So mm. he did, I don't even know how. And then there's, you know, just buddies. Now you're here. I, I don't know. <laughs> like, people, I think people just come into your life. And when you're open to allowing that to happen, yeah. uh, it just happens. So that's what it did. And yeah, they're still here and we're all buddies. And, I mean, this is Kumar's place as much as it's mine. Yeah. It's our, you know, we're 50-50 here. Mm -hmm. This is, mm. you know, so I'm stoked, yeah. What's next for Becoming Filipino? Uh, some sort of super throwback to what I did years ago, just zoom off of my motor and interact with the Philippines and yeah. see what happens. I think that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna be next okay. for me. Because I miss that, bro. I mean, right, it's in the right, pandemic, right? right. right? And, but I think one of the best ways to get inspired and really want to be here more and want to be involved in a positive way is to go around and connect with the Philippines. Right, so. right. What's next for me? Yeah, I'm just going to roam around and learn and share positive vibes. That's but it. also I like to see myself look at ways that I can give more people opportunities to explore their country. So that would be cool. I don't know how, but I'll figure it out. Yeah. One of the most inspiring things is when you meet people in the real world and they tell you, right. they're like, dude, you're exactly who you are online yeah. in the real world. And that's what I want. I want people to yeah. realize that everything I push on the internet is real. Yeah. And really me. And I really mean it. And I'm passionate about it. And it's not, you know, yeah. it's not just fake. Yeah. Whatever. You know, we talked earlier about <laughs> Pinoy baiting. Right, Dude, right, I'm, right, I'm, right, right. Like, and so, yeah, I learned a lot from you, man. Really. I really, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I think what's really cool is you're not even learning a lot from me. You're actually just learning a lot from Filipinos and the Filipinos. Right. I'm just some guy who's like in the middle of it. Yes. I just take positive education that I get from Filipinos and then I reflect on it personally because it means something yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. And then I just spit it out onto YouTube. You're like, Facebook, uh, you're like the instrument to remind people to see the good things, to see the good side. And uh, yeah. That, that's, that's cool, man. That means a lot that you say that. Like, and again, remember though too, it's, it's really not me doing it it's like everyone bro. yeah it's a yeah, community yeah, you know yeah, that yeah, yeah with your yeah. i'm sure with your chit chats and your and your even your facebook page over the years and everything like you know i'm sure you felt the sense of a community yeah. doing it with you and that's what i feel like people sometimes ask me like when are you gonna stop or you know in the future like you're gonna do this for five more years and quit or whatever like i just won't stop unless it becomes something that isn't having a positive effect but I just want to say this, you are a blessing. That's you cool. are a blessing, man. Thank you, just please continue becoming Filipino. I appreciate it, man. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I like, like you just said, I, I don't, I struggle. I like to give people compliments, bro. Right. I'm sure, just like you just gave me one, I'm sure you feel right. good to give, I, I, I still sometimes 
you know, just wonder, you know, when I open my inbox and there's like, over the years, there's been like tens of thousands of messages and where people compliment me or yeah. say something positive and it's really, it blows my mind because I don't even feel like I'm an extraordinary person or doing anything super extraordinary or, you know, I'm just a regular dude sharing some positive vibes and it's just so overwhelming how people see it and connect with it in such a powerful, positive way. Thank you, man, for having a chit-chat with me. Kulas. <laughs> Becoming Filipino. Thank you, man. Oh, man. We can have a beer. We got a beer. <laughs> a beer. A beer.